While tensions continue to build up on the Korean Peninsula, the U.S. is positioned a destroyer capable of shooting down missiles near North Korea. An unnamed U.S. official has said the USS Fitzgerald has been sent off the southwestern coast of the Korean Peninsula. Meanwhile, the White House spo spokesman Jay Carney says Washington has not seen any sign that Pyongyang's mobilizing its forces following last week military threats. North Korea said last week the country is in a state of war with South Korea and is ready to strike targets in the U.S. mainland. The threats heightened tensions on the Korean Peninsula. Washington then flexed its muscles by sending two of its nuclear-capable stealth bombers to the region. Joining us now from San Francisco is Richard Becker with the Answer Coalition via Skype. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, Mr. Becker. Now, considering, according to the White House itself, Pyongyang, there has been no sign that Pyongyang has been mobilizing its uh, forces uh, since uh, the threats it made last week. Do you think the deployment of uh, this destroyer uh, is necessary? No, it's a provocative act. There's no question about that. And there's been a number of provocative acts. Uh, <clears throat> here in the United States, what we hear through the mainstream media, the corporate media, is all about uh, rhetoric coming from North Korea. Uh, uh, how that is translated, we don't really know. But we do know for sure that very provocative actions are emanating from the United States. The sending of the B-2 stealth bombers, which went all the way from Missouri in the United States, on a nonstop flight, uh, a flight that cost about five and a half million dollars just for the fuel for that flight. The sending of those stealth bombers, which then flew very close to North Korea and dropped what they called inert munitions uh, on the country. And that, uh, when that happened, of course, uh, North Korea, which had virtually its entire infrastructure destroyed, no building was left more than two stories uh, at the, by the end of the Korean War, the U.S. war in Korea uh, in 1953, of course, responded to that. Uh, and that was followed then by the deployment of F-22 stealth fighters into uh, the airspace over Korea. And now we have the deployment of the Fitzgerald and a number of other uh, actions that have been taken by the United States, which clearly are provocative actions following the uh, new economic sanctions, which in themselves uh, were, an, uh, uh, were a provocation against uh, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Right. What kind of a role do you think China can and will play in the future if things continue to go this way? Many are saying uh, these recent provocations by the U.S. are aimed more toward China than North Korea. Do you agree with that? Well, I think that that may be true in the long run. Uh, you know, shortly before he stepped down as uh, Secretary of Defense, as they call it, <clears throat> uh, Leon Panetta reported that there was a pivot to Asia taking place and that even a greater deployment of uh, a greater proportion of the U.S. international deployment of forces would be now concentrated on Asia. And that shift is taking place. Clearly, uh, U.S. officials, uh, the administration, the Pentagon, uh, the elite in the United States see China as a competitor of the United States in the long run. So they are targeting Korea right now, uh, North Korea right now, but the overall strategy is one of surrounding uh, China and Korea with military bases that stretch from Japan uh, to the Philippines, including Taiwan, and the direct deployment of U.S. naval and air forces all over the region. Okay, we're just going to have to wait and see how this pans out. Uh, Richard Becker with the Answer Coalition, they're joining us uh, from San Francisco via Skype. Mr. Becker, thank you very much for your comments here on Press TV.